It's still the Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. We, we look at the concerns as to having a cashless economy while the Central Bank of Nigeria, uh, CBN, has asked commercial banks and all the stakeholders in the banking sector to and calling on Nigerians to embrace the e-wallet platform recently introduced by the Apex Bank, noting that it will deepen payment options. The city is while well sensitizing the market women and men are the Item Eden Park markets in Kalba. Uh, the sensitization was organized by Bankers Committee with the electronic payment system. Nigerians can do their business transaction even without visiting the banks. Uh, th th that's, you know, the school of thoughts. But uh, just quickly, it would just be very simple because this conversation has been ongoing for a long time. Husseini Olari Waju, who is the MD of the HAQ Technology Management Services. Husseini, it's good to have you join us this morning. Uh, thank you. It's my pleasure, Messi. No, no, no. So quickly, I'd like to share your thoughts on the consent of the Apex Bank, asking that the e uh wallet or the payment system should be embraced by traders. That's on the one hand. Okay, uh, thank you. So, like usual, I, I can see, let me use the word, uh, uh, policies from assorted, you know, at this point in time. The e uh, solution has been on ground for the past two years. The question is, why are people not adopting this solution, you know, as a means of an alternative means of payment? So for me, I, I think what, what we should look into more is the channel of communication and orientation. The bankers committee here, yeah, they're trying their best. However, the fastest moving way to ensure adaptability of policies like cashless policy that has been proven that I'm seeing in the industry today is through agent network. But today, this same agent network are people that are not kind of, they're just on paper considered as a, as an important part of the, you know, financial ecosystem. But when it comes to implementation, they are not really carried along. They are not categorized. They are not really engage, engaging, right? And again, uh, it's not just about the bank. I think another way we can see uh, the uh, digitalization of financial services in Nigeria is the adoption of all this kind of innovative way the fintechs have gone about it. But today, I don't, I don't see any fintech even talking but, about email. Particularly, the bankers, uh, the bankers committee sensitizing market women and men uh, were very explicit. So it's the ENAR platform, the ENAR. I, I'm sure that you're very... Uh, in the know of this particular introduction and innovation as to, you know, the financial economy of our country. So I'd like you to speak to that one. Uh, do you think that there's a lot of sensitization? Do you think that the, uh, there's a lot of capacity in that particular regard when you talk about the inner? Exactly. So what I'm saying is, yes, is about the approach of the sensitization, right, and the adoption of the solution. I'm trying to lay a, a basis where you see the adoption of other financial solutions, which is digitalized. If the same approach is used, I, I believe it things as it could. However, you know, uh, the, the bankers committee goes on formal way, you know, and when you look at agent network, if agents are actually uh, deal carried along for the e nera sensitization or e nera adoption and usage, they use their integrity, they use their influence, you know, to explain and their own languages at their local places to explain and let people adopt this solution. But this set of people are people who are not duly carried along to, you know, to, to encourage the adoption. And I, I, I keep saying, for me, if we want to get things right, we need to understand the working channel and include this working channel to ensure we get good results in good time. Going formal, Nigerians are scared. And you know, you have something to give them confidence, you know, to be able to say, this is what we want to go next. Mm. So um, just still in, in the light of that conversation, as a country, do you think that we have what it takes, uh, infrastructure, uh, the awareness, uh, you know, favorable policies, the list is almost endless to enthrone an efficient cashless society. 
not limited you know, to you, the in era now, you, but we're saying you, you are going to tell market women to embrace all the channels of payment, the POS machines. You also need to understand how favorable, you know, the prices are for them to accept it because it's not free. So I, I'm saying encompassing. Do you think that we have the capacity, the technology, the infrastructure, whatever it takes to run, I mean, to say we're a cashless society? It's a good policy, but we don't. We are not yet there. We, when it comes to in terms of infrastructure, we still have a long way to go. We can see that within January to March, where uh, this cashless policy uh, was really hitting hard, even banks are failing. And another issue is uh, how do we handle a centralized issue resolution system, where it make it easy, you know. To address, we still have pending issues as, as we speak in terms of this cashless way. So we are not there. We are in terms of infrastructure, in terms of the orientation, in terms of the understanding. We are actually not there. There are still much work to be done. So beyond the policy, we also need to look into other uh, factors like technology, which is not well granted capacity you know technical know-how you have people you know human capacity development infrastructure capacity and a lot of things needs to be looked into we are not yet there there are still a lot of ways a lot of things to improve on to ensure this cashless policy or any other means alternative means of payment is going as expected mm. so so let me let, let's take it from that point now uh, what are the things that can be done to uh, embrace this cashless policy? What exactly can we do? You, you have said that there are a lot of things that can be done. What are those things that can be done for us to say, hey, we're a, a cashless nation? So first of all, we need to work on capacity in terms of technology. The technology infrastructure we have in banks today are not readily uh, you know, welcoming for this kind of policy. You have overwhelming load of tra traffic on transactions, and they can't handle it. They have to scale up, and they have to do a, a scale up structure that, if tomorrow they are, they are going to extend, they should be able to accommodate that. Secondly, we need to also work on human capital development. We have a lot of people in the sector right now who have little to no knowledge of what they're doing. It is very very necessary. We address that. Thirdly, issue resolution has to be prompt. You know, we have to centralize issue resolution where it's not like you send money from one entity to another and the other entity is claiming not to have received that money. However, the money is in that entity's position. You know, there are a lot of issues around there. So, who do you trust? So, is mistrust? Uh, who do you trust? Who, who is telling the truth? Who is telling the lie? So that, that is knowledge gap. Then channel of orientation has to also be very, very defined, you know, and understand what works and what don't work. We have over 50 million Nigerians who are not who don't do not have bank accounts, who are not bank. And these over 50 million people are the decider of the economy. You know, these people, there are ways you cannot just do formal formal approach to them you have to find a way to do informal to formal approach for them to you know be able to end the trust have an understanding and we have a better financial system in terms of cashless or cash economy well uh useni olariwajiri thank you so much we have to let this go at this point in time uh because we need to join the newsroom at nine o'clock for the news group we appreciate your thoughts you so this morning on the show we have been speaking with Useni Olai Waju, who is the MD of the HAQ Technology Management Services right here in Nigeria. Thank you once again. And that's the size of our conversation this morning on the show. That's The Breakfast. We will return tomorrow. The lineup would be interesting. Now, and if you missed out on any part of it, we ask that you, uh, you know, follow us on different social media platforms on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and subscribe to YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa. Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. You can also view us that also on uh, you know, our YouTube channel as well. My name is Messi Boko. Have a fantastic morning.